Greetings YouTube. This is your resident Land Cruiser Nut. I'd like to welcome everyone back to the channel. Today we are going to be working on this 1997 Toyota Land Cruiser. Now in terms of 80 series this is the crown jewel. The final year this is the one that everybody wants. This one just happens to be triple locked. It's been in this owner's family since 1999. If you saw a video I posted in the last few days it was this FZJ80 had a crank no start issue and I posted a challenge to some people to see if they could accurately diagnose why this 80 series would crank but not start so a little background on this truck before we dive into what the problem was the owner was driving down the road and he said he started to lose power then he regained power and then eventually lost power and had to have the vehicle towed home. He let the vehicle sit for about three months and then decided to try to figure it out on his own and assumed that it was a fuel pump problem, which, you know, it could have be. He replaced the fuel pump, that didn't work out. So then he had some friends come over and they put an EFI relay in it and a new EFI fuse and it still didn't start. He called the Toyota dealership in town and the Toyota dealership actually referred him to me so this is kind of how I came over and started working on this vehicle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside and I'm going to show you exactly what the problem was. Let me uh, get inside the vehicle real quick and I'll get the key turned on. I haven't fixed the issue yet, but I want to show you how to accurately diagnose this problem. Because a lot of people guess and what I want people to stop doing is the parts explosion of putting in parts without accurately diagnosing exactly what is the, the problem. So let's get on the inside. I'm gonna put the key in and we're gonna watch this turn, turn on. All right, we had no check engine light and some of you in the comments guessed that. But what a lot of you missed was the thing that was actually the most important. And if you watch, up in that voltmeter, there was no light come on either. Yes, the no check engine light would be an issue, but really the big issue is to let you know exactly what the problem was that voltmeter light not coming on. What this is, is a fusible link issue. Now, some people actually guessed fusible link and that was the correct answer, but really no one pointed out that that light on the voltmeter wasn't on. First, we have to understand that there are three fusible links inside of an 80 series land, land cruiser. There's the main fusible link, there's the AM1 fusible link, and the AM2 fusible link. Now understanding what these do will help you accurately diagnose this problem. If you have a main fusible link problem, you can test this by trying to turn on your headlights, the radio, the AC fan, the stop lights, the tail lights. If none of those work, then you have a problem with the main fusible link. The next one you have is your AM1 fusible link. If you have a problem with this, your dome light's not gonna work, your hazard lights are not gonna work, your diff lock, your turn signals, none of that's gonna work. Now moving on to the AM2. This actually is the most engine centric fusible link and it provides power to the ignition switch, the injectors, the igniter, the ignition coil, and the distributor. So that is exactly what's happening in this, in this truck. The customer, you know, thinks he has a fuel pump problem, replaces that, not working. There's no check engine light, so he does some tests. There's no spark um, going to the plugs, and it's all because the AM2 digital link is not working, and you can tell because if the AM2 fusible link is out, then that light is not going to come on. The point being is, yes, you have to buy all the fusible links at once, but I want people to understand exactly what they all do because if you have an AM1 fusible link out, that light is still going to come on. So at that point, you need to be testing the dome light. If the dome light doesn't come on, then you know you have an AM1 fusible link issue. I just don't want people going in and replacing all of these parts. And there is a lot of videos on YouTube with people replacing fusible links but there is no one really explaining how to accurately tell which fusible link it is. In the description, I'm going to leave a PDF that has been circulating on MUD for quite some time that goes over all of the relays and all of the fusible links 
and how to diagnose them. Um, I'm not really going to show you how to change the fusible link. There's quite a few videos on that. But what I'm going to do is once I put the new fusible link in, I'm going to turn the key back on and show you how that light lights up. So let me get the hood open and get the new fusible link back in and then we'll jump back into the truck and see if we can get this thing running after it's been sitting for nearly three months. So I got the new fusible link put back on and I want to show you that now everything is working. You see that light is now on. So that was the AM2 physical link that was out. So always pay attention to what your dash tells you. These Japanese engineers always had a way to help us figure these solutions out when by just simply looking at your indicator lights. I know many noticed you that the check engine light was on and you jumped to EFI relays, you jumped to EFI fuses, but that was not it. It was the fusible link and it was the AM2 and you could figure that out by simply looking at that light right there. So again, if your other lights, if it's another problem, this light could be on, but your dome light could be out and, or your tail lights could be out, but all of them have to be working for your 80 series to come on. And this applies for all 80 series, 91 through 97s. Now there are other reasons why you might get a crank no start. You could have a camshaft sensor, for example, in this, uh, or crankshaft sensor in this 80 series, the later models. You could have a mass airflow meter problem. Um, you could have a fuel pump problem, but it all goes back to, let's first take a look at what our dash is telling us. And I will put that document in the, in the description below so that everyone has that list of things to look over if your 80 series fails to start. Um, so I appreciate everyone watching the channel. I hope you learned something today about how to properly diagnose which fusible link has gone bad and how to look at your dash and tell that something is wrong before we do the uh, proverbial parts explosion. So thanks for all my subscribers and there is a winner. I told in the video, previous video, whoever guessed correctly is gonna go get a set of V-Gate battery terminals. I'm gonna be announcing that in the comments and I will be getting a hold of our winner uh, once this video goes up. Thanks again for watching and I look forward to having you all back for the next video.